All right. We are live. This is Sound Booth Theater Live. And this is our last Christmas special for 2022. Thank you so much for everybody who's here. It looks like we got 13 viewers. Hopefully we'll see more people pile in. But I'm really excited about this episode. Um, already we have Rasta Life Reggae, who I haven't seen in a while. Thanks for coming back. Scott Kidder, Frank Moore, Friow42, Sarah King is in the audience, of course. Missy, uh, Carrie Cottle, um, all uh, Sarah King acolytes. Frank Moore, oh yeah, I already said that. And that's it, that's it so far. So if you guys want to shout out, please say something in the chat and we will say hi back. Or if you, you know, say something insulting, we'll talk shit back to you, whatever. Hi, Burn. Burn's here. Burn Dean is mm-hmm. here. Hey, hey. All right. So we have a fun episode for you guys today. It's just the three of us. Um, but uh, we definitely have fun things to do. One more episode of The Pirates of New Fantasia. I don't know that we actually said that was the title of Sarah King's new, uh, new uh, audio drama serial that she's... Um, that she's writing super fast and sending to us just just for Sound Booth Theater Live. But this will be episode two. Um, we also have just a little bit of uh, adjustments. Oh, wow. I haven't seen that one before. Um, oh. I wish the eyebrows moved. I miss Annie, too. I don't know why she won't come back. All right. So... Uh, <laughs> that was very uh, upbeat and sad at the same time. Yeah. Uh, um so let's see uh yeah so we have some voice changes for some of the characters uh but not too much and uh and we have like a little bit of a different tone for episode two but i think i think uh we'll get back into the uh craziness um eventually and then let's see what else what is our request for today Ooh, was that uh there was a name i recognized David North? Yes. yes David Battlefield North, Reclaimer was, by David yeah. North. And Guardian go... of Asterfall, book yeah. one, Battlefield Reclaimer. Um, this sounds slightly familiar. If you could pass me the text. Uh, I might, so I could, uh, I might be able to do that. Let's see. Thank you. And uh, then we also have the cinema uh, portion for today. So that'll be right after I do um, the uh, Pirates of Fantasia uh, of New Fantasia. So I think those three things are our big events. Uh, but the cinema thing is uh, we we all watched, all three of us watched Krampus over the past two weeks. I watched mm-hmm. it over the past weekend. I rewatched it Same. and found I'm, out I'm some new some new things that I'm really curious to talk with oh, you okay. with you so guys this about. Is your second viewing, you'll have more insight. You'll be able yeah. To well, get I a also bit deeper. did some digging. Oh. found out some stuff that I didn't oh. realize the first time. All right. Uh, th- that's going to be a fun portion. So, uh, <laughs> New Fantasia, Pirates of New Fantasia, then Cinema, and then we'll close off with our request from David North. So, before we get into that news, um, all right. So, what is the news over the past couple weeks? Well, first piece of news, we had an incredible release two Fridays ago, um, Epithet Erased, Prisons of Plastic. Uh, now, that audiobook, full cast, sound effects and music, cinematic audio, was brought to us by Jello Apocalypse. They did a, a Kickstarter last year for 350 grand. They had so many fans. They completely... Uh, funded the shit out of their audiobook. And um, they spent the entire year, Jello did, uh, Brendan Blaber, uh, spent the entire year producing this cinematic audio. And just a month before, maybe two months before we released it, he contacted us to see if we could distribute. So we didn't produce, we didn't have any part of actually making the thing, we just distributed for them. But holy crap, did his fans show up with a mm-hmm. vengeance, they completely, like they completely broke our website for an entire day. All Friday, it was impossible to use our website, and that's because they, it, they just completely flooded us. So 
any of you here who are interested in sort of YA stuff, maybe maybe younger, you know, kind of uh, young teen to um, young adult type of content, uh, this is definitely, it's based on a TTRPG, um, and it's uh, it's based on a, an animation that uh, the Brendan Blaber actually made on YouTube. Um, that's been out for years now. Um, it's great. It's it's really charming. Um, so if oh, you guys are interested confused. in checking it out, yeah, look at how many. I views. didn't realize there were that look many that. already. Wow. <laughs> Kaiju Battlefield Surgeon. The entire sick. The entire twelve episodes don't have that many reviews, and that's been out you know for a whole Dang. year. So these these are this is this is some mega fans right here. Um, hopefully someday something of ours will get this kind of. Uh, fervor going. We're working on it. We'll see. We'll see how that works. But anyway, go check that out if you haven't already. Um, other news. Alaskan Fire and Alaskan Fury by Sarah King was just released. I think it was last Thursday. Um, those are two full classic audiobooks narrated by Zachary Johnson with uh, Annie Ellicott, Emma Kate Starling, myself, and is Justin in, in those? I think Justin's in those, right? I think at least think... one character in those? Oh. Well, I don't know. You know, he was supposed to be a craw, but they went with Right, Zach. right. They, yeah, they went with what So Zach I don't I don't know if Justin... I can't remember. But almost 20 hours each. And we're only we're selling him for just 11.99. And by the way, guys, the the uh 12 days of Christmas sale is still going on. Uh, Epithet Erased is not part of it, but Alaskan Fire and Alaskan Fury are. You can get 25% off if you go to our website and order um, so any of the books that are within the sale. We've had 10 days of Christmas Christmas now. Tomorrow we have a day of Christmas, the 11th. The next day is 12th. And then the sale keeps going through the 26th. And on each day of Christmas, we have a different title. So be sure to find that sale page. I believe if you go to soundbooththeater.com, the first thing you'll see is the, is the sale link. And you can see all the titles that are up so far. Another release that just happened, uh, let's see, we have Sarah stuff, we have The Virtue of War and Virtue of Chaos, The Syndicate Legacy, those have been republished on our app, those are both 25% off. Um, we have The Cold Reads for Chrysalis 3, those are all available for free, they just released on Tuesday. Um, what are we missing, guys? Anything else? The short stories. Short stories. Well, those those are on sale at least. Oh, yeah. um, but uh, oh, then our next two releases are tomorrow and the yes. day after. So yes. tomorrow we will be releasing the first piece of audio that we have collaborated with Ben Wolf on. Ben Wolf is a very silly man that I met uh, last year. Um, who uh, Matt Dineman introduced me to, and uh, he's he, we've become good friends. And uh, he's got good books. He goes to conventions, and he sells physical copies of them. Uh, and we're looking forward to doing more work with him. Our first collaboration is called S1-R3N. That's releasing tomorrow. It is a short story, and it is a full cinematic audio experience featuring myself as the narrator, Ryan H. Reed as the main character, Dr. Grant, and Dory Sachs as his daughter, Alexis. Um, so, please watch out for that. It's going to be free. Free cinematic audio for at least a week. I think we're just going to leave it free for a week, and then we'll put a, slap a price tag on it. So don't forget to try, and th try that one out. And, of course, Friday, tis the season, Kringle Down 3. I can't believe we're getting a, third, a second sequel. I don't know if Shane's going to make another one. He's left it. He, I feel like he's left it open one way or the other. It could close. It could be we have a next another one n next year. But it's become a tradition here at Sound Booth Theater. That's right. Yeah. Um, uh, Kringle down three. Uh, we we had Richard Smith do the sound effects this time. Uh, we had um, a good friend of Mr. Ahmed Mahmoud taking over some of the new music named Eddie Zach. And it's brilliant. This is some of it that you're listening to right now. Of course, we used some of um, uh, you know the the music that Ahmed already made, and we have two new people joining the cast. 
for Kringle Down, we have Ryan H. Reed once again coming into the show as Krampus. And we have Miss Annie Ellicott playing a character named Sushi. So for you guys uh, to, uh, if you want to check it out, be sure to come in on Friday. Now Kringle Down, Kring <coughs> Kringle Down 2, and Kringle Down 3 will be available, available for 25% off by Friday. That is our 12th day of Christmas. So be aware, two new releases coming in the next two days. Go sign up for our newsletter. Subscribe to this channel, by the way. And, uh, yeah, I think that's all of the news. Any other news? Did I miss any other news? I think that's it. Yeah. Uh, I think, think so. that's it. So, let's get cracking on uh, Pirates of New Fantasia. Let's, look at that. Friow42 says, Zach's voice is so dreamy. <laughs> <laughs> well, Zachually. <laughs> I don't know if I'd call it dreamy. Okay, so there's our Zachually. script. I'm going to go get some water real quick, and I'm, it's time to get going. Oh, episode two is called Marty, looks like. Oh, cool. Yeah, the name of the episode, Rich. We've got to go back. Yes. So just We've got to go back, Marty. <laughs> back. To the future. Dreamy. I don't think I made her sound creepy enough. Zach's voice is dreamy. That's about as creepy as the cinematic audio <laughs> thing you did. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's... I'm hey, Simon! Sounds like. Simon showed up. What's up, Simon? <laughs> Thanks for coming. All right, here goes. <laughs> Exterior. A cold, wet alley where four well-dressed thugs in pinstripe suits, cloaks, and top hats are blocking the exit. Two women and a man are lying on the cobbles, unconscious or groaning. <laughs> Please, don't hurt them. This is neutral territory, Captain Mikey. Top Hat doesn't tol tolerate fleshist AI haters here on Belfast. Artificial pay artificials pay the bills. Better than that ragged joke they call the Crusade. Please, I'm not Crusade. We'll go. Please, just let us go. No, I don't think so. You're probably one of the, those self-righteous fucks who killed my brother back in the Red Clad, killing off sympathizers. Well, I'll show you some sympathy. Come here, sweetie. I got some time on my hands tonight. Kill the butch bitch and the crusader. We'll dump the bodies in the river. <laughs> Please, I'll pay. I don't have much, but I'll pay. I have some palladium ingots. I have a ship. Uh, I... We already gonna take your ship, Captain. You earned that much by punching my boss here in the face. I didn't know you were a top hat. Yeah, well, now you do. Jeb, you got that brain scrambler the bots gave us? Great. Use it on the dyke first. She's waking up, and she's, dare I say it, more of a challenge than this piece of shit. Besides... I always wanted to see how these things worked. Uh, did we get them, Captain? So, so what? I just point the cone thing at her and pull the trigger? No, please, please, don't! The fuck? The fuck, Jeb? What the fuck? Who the fuck are you? Please, leave the area. Or I'll be forced to kill the rest of you, which I don't want to do. There, there's three of us, and we've got full auto lays. You've got what? A colony pistol? Yes. Wait, I know you. You're the fucking cobbler down on Ninth. Yes, Top Hat Cor Corp owns this planet. You'll have nowhere to hide. You've lost everything, you 
fucking mud rat. I know. Jeb's dead, boss. Got him right between the eyes. Who the fuck? He was like all the way down the street. You're dead, Martin. Grab the scrambler and use it on the hero here. Boys, shoot him if he tries to move. That won't work on me. See? Uh, boss? I don't want to kill anyone else. I'm having a bad day. I was actually contemplating ending my existence. Please, go. We'll end your existence, won't we, guys? Uh, yeah, boss. Y yeah, boss. Let me move over here to ensure none of the ricochets damage the humans on the ground. If you don't mind, I can accept damage to my person, but not to humans who can fight back. Murder that motherfucker! Ah! 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 Wait, he's getting back up? That's impossible! Jesus fuck! What the fuck? Why in the monkey fuck are you still breathing? Captain? Believe me, I saw it, Rose. Now that I've demonstrated my combat superiority, please leave. Aha! Uh -huh. Where are you going, bitch? Put me down! <laughs> the hot chick was trying to crawl away, boss. You still want her, or you want to just shoot her? Please, don't make me kill you. Please. I'm not sure I can have another one of my, one on my conscience. Things are starting to unravel as it is. <laughs> Let go of me! The bitch kicked me! Oh, oh you're dead, Thundercunt! <laughs> no, don't! <laughs> Captain, that's an infill. Get me the fuck out of here, I can't walk! I'm getting out of here. I can't either. I think a leg's broke. Louise, can you help us? <sighs> Captain, look what it's doing to them. Oh, you're one to... Oh, you're one to talk, miss. Makes her friends clean up gore for hours? Come help us! <laughs> Louise, snap the fuck out of it. Easy. Her family was killed by those things. I don't care. It's gonna kill us next if... Oh, shit, it's turning around. Oh, no, no, put me down! Captain, help! Help! <laughs> Don't you fucking hurt her! I'll carry her to your ship. Sir, judging by the angle, your leg is broken. I'll have to carry you too. One of them escaped, so we need to move fast. Grab my hand, ma'am. I'll help you to your feet. Don't you fucking touch me! Can you walk? I know what you are. Um, yes. I would assume anyone with prior combat experience in the war would have guessed as much. Is your ship parked at the docks around the corner? Captain, don't fucking trust him. Mr. George has said they were over here! You're all going to die if you don't let me carry you to your ship. That's the guard coming right now. I'll escape, but you won't. Captain, those things are made to penetrate human defenses. Don't trust it. We don't have a lot of choice, Rose. Here, get me up on your other shoulder. <laughs> Grab Rose. Go, go! Uh, you let go of me, you robot fucker! Calm down, Rose! Y yes, ma'am. Please stop kicking me, ma'am. Uh, oh, man. Oh, we're moving so fast. I think I'm gonna puke. <laughs> Which aisle are you parked in? Got a lot number? Don't tell that AI bastard anything. He'll take over our ship and kill us all. 43B. Got it. There it is now. Wow. How many times have you crashed? Too many. Hold on while I get the door. It's us, Alex. Let us in. And here with the alarm going off, I thought I was going to have to shoot something again. Let me down. Put us down inside. Yes, sir. Sorry, ma'am. <laughs> not, to, not to be a cynic or anything, Captain, but usually when the alarm goes off while we're docked somewhere nice, it means you did something you weren't supposed to. 
Glad to see we won't be adding another pile of insurmountable debt to our ledger. Welcome back. Who's the strapping young blood? Who's the strapping young blonde? And why are you all bleeding? Is that parrot a Mortec? Yeah, don't worry. He's one of the good guys. Alex, we need to get out of here. Stat. Marty, shut the door. We'll drop you off at the next port. I'm... Uh, if that's a Mortec, I'm not sure I want to... A fleshist, really? After what we saw today? I prefer humans, to be honest. There they are! 43B! Shit! It's the Top Hats. Come inside and close the door before they climb the gangplank. Ah, uh, so it was you. Typical. Not only do you humans make me manage all the biometrics, but you can't even be asked to shut the doors behind you when you run off planet sign to start bar fights. Like animals, I swear. No, Alex, don't close him in! Uh, I'm not sure. Nonsense. I should stay. While some other crew members would be content to leave you to the top hats after saving our plucky captain, I find that to be bad form. And since both pilots seem to be incapacitated, not that that's new, I'll get the ship in orbit. Again. At least they haven't triggered the grav locks yet. I'm assuming someone's going to be needing the hangover juice. So, uh... <sighs> Thanks for saving us back there. I really didn't want to kill anyone. And I shouldn't be here. Your Mortec parrot is not going to like- Not going to like what? Killing people? No, they do it all the time. Like deranged apes that way. And what's wrong with your... <gasps> Captain, back away from him right now. That's an infill. We know. He saved us back there. You knew! And you brought him on this ship. He's a shapeshifter. Look at him. His whole face is dissolving. It's one of the advanced ones. They were going to scramble Rose's brain. He stopped them. Of course he did. It was probably a setup to get some dumb human to drag him back to Crusade territory under their radar. Everyone get away from him. I'm jettisoning him into space immediately. Why is his face melting? I've never seen that before. Killing hurts. I have trouble- Shut up! Keep your mouth shut! No talking, no infiltrating, I'm ending you! You take one of my crew hostage, I'm ending you anyway. Killing you is more important to me than saving them, just so you know. Well, that's not very nice. It needs to know I have priorities, or it will just kill you all. Actually, Alex, I really don't think it wants to- Please, don't let that thing ride with us in this ship, Captain, please! We're in space, what am I gonna do? I'll go into the airlock. Yes, you do that. Do it right now. I'll make sure to dump you into the nearest sun, you fucking monster. Now, hold on. He saved us. Captain, the whole side of his head is sloughing off. Dude, what's wrong with you? It's an act to get you to pity him, Captain, just as any good infill would do in his place when presented with emotional, easily manipulated apes. Get in the airlock! <laughs> I'm having a very bad day. Captain, clear the cargo bay. I'll just flush him out. Probably would be best. What's with the abrupt takeoff? I was just beginning to apply my moustache wax when- Oh my god, what's wrong with him? His face is dissolving into black cubes. Is he even human? No, it's a non-sentient killing machine. Just a mass of Casper nanotech guided by electromagnetic bond principles that allow it to shift its form at will, making it able to change color using eye-tricking, light-refracting re light refracting structures, much like the concept of scales on a butterfly's wings. That's an infill? 
Captain. His blocks are falling on the floor. He's going to infect the ship. He's going. He's going to infect the ship. They'll dissolve after I get the brain out the airlock. Everyone, get into your rooms. This won't take long. No, God damn it! He saved us. Why are you dissolving there, bud? Hard. Concentrate. From getting shot earlier? No. Different pain. They don't feel pain. It's an act. Captain, get everyone to their rooms so I can get rid of this garbage. Alex, shut up a sec. What's your name, bud? Don't ask for his name. Anything he gives you will be fabricated to get under your emotion-driven human defenses. Everything you see here is a ruse, Captain. Shut up. Louise, hand me that med kit. Gotta fix my leg. You should roast him, Captain. Thanks for the kit. So, uh... You okay, bud? What should we call you? Ugh. Marty. Sorry. Didn't want to... to kill. No, I... I can't stop... thinking about it. Don't let those blocks falling out of him touch you... Oh. Don't let those blocks falling out of him touch you, Captain. Each one is a load of billions of nanotech bots all electromagnetically locked together. They could be laced with an infectious nanite that attacks organics. We need to jettison him before he kills you all. Just tired. Of hurting. Had to run. Had to run from who? Casper. Bullshit! That's a load of horseshit! Captain, every moment you let it talk, you're letting it worm its way into your stupid human heart! Just let me get rid of it! He doesn't look like he's faking anything, Alex. He looks like he's dying. Half of him is just black blocks. Black blocks that will instantly put themselves back together the moment it feels it has an advantage! Where's the advantage? None of us has guns. Rose, where's your gun? That last one was expensive. Top Hats took it. I'll add that to the expensive expense column. Please, get that thing off the ship, Captain. Why is he just laying there and rippling like that? Like one of those kids' toys where you put your hand in the pegs and it shows up on the other side. Dude, what's wrong with you? Many things. I can't... <coughs> Get to the airlock. <laughs> Captain, I've heard of this before. Back in the core. Casper... Always kills them, though. Heard of what? Look at how he's rippling like that. That can't be normal. It's not. Sometimes something misfires in Casper's soldier bots and they go nuts. It's not a conscious choice like Alex. More a scramble in their code. They'll be out on the battlefield and just stop killing all of a sudden, and usually they'll get put out of their misery by a teammate. That's why infills work in teams of three or more. Two to put, put, two to put down the one that goes bad. They couldn't afford letting that error reach government lab techs to analyze it. What happened to your team, Marty? <gasps> I realized what I was. I didn't want to die, so I killed them. One infill could not take out two. It's mathematically impossible. That's why they always go in threes. You need to let me kill this thing, Captain. It's lying to you. How'd you kill them, Marty? I locked them in a shuttle I had pre-programmed to collide with a star. Oh, yeah? And how many people were on that shuttle? 4,213. See? That is what I'm talking about, Captain! It was my... <laughs> only way out. 
brain fills don't have a philosophical thought in their bodies. They can't determine right from wrong. Keeping this thing on the ship is asking for everyone you care about to die, Captain. Why'd he save us then? Killing those people. I've spent 50 years trying to make up for it. Bullshit! I'll believe that when I see Trevor stop shaving his chest before a date. Captain, please tell everyone to go to their bunks. I'll take care of this. And what about you, Alex? Captain gave you a chance when he didn't have to. I'm sorry. Did the antiquities-obsessed monkey think I wanted his opinion? No. Stay out of this. Trevor, I provide a highly beneficial controlling influence on on the local tech, including docking support for your less-than-legal adventures for a very minimal risk. That incoherent pile of nanite blocks is high risk. It's guaranteed to kill everyone on this ship if he doesn't kill them directly because he's planning to use us to infiltrate Crusader territory, which I'd bet my money on, then the Caspers who come looking for him once they realize he escaped will. You keep him, everyone here will die, Trevor. Kinda shitty thing to do, killing someone who saved you. But who am I to talk? I'm just the lonely rube a bunch of pirates picked, the least likely to be missed if he died in their heist. I'll be in my bunk if you need to discuss how much this latest clusterfuck just cost us. Captain, just be quiet a sec. Marty, are you dying or what? I just need time to recover. <laughs> He's lying! He's a perfectly self-contained system. He doesn't have anything to recover from! It's my ship. Nobody's jettisoning anyone on my ship without a good reason. I gave you plenty of good- Alex? Go count toothpicks in the pantry or something. You know I'm obligated to obey you, Captain. I do. I'm very curious how many toothpicks we have for our next party. Go count them. Yes, Captain. Right away. Please don't let it stay, Captain. <laughs> Please. I'm not killing something that doesn't deserve it. Rose, what do you think? I think Alex is right. It's risky, sir. I need help. Getting to the... the airlock. Can't... make my... legs move. Why can't you make your legs move? Don't... No. I know that look, Rose. You're having second thoughts. I killed seven of these things in the war, sir. They... Don't act like this. Not the ones Casper sends after us. They're all smug and smooth and charismatic. This guy looks like he's having a nervous breakdown. All right. You've got the most experience with these things. I'll let you decide. I think we'll all be dead now if it hadn't helped us, sir. And I think he probably gave up a perfectly good life living as a human to save me from getting scrambled like an egg and Louise carted off for some flesh trade in the city underbelly. I'd say we've got a lot of things to be grateful for, sir. And I ain't never seen an infill working for Casper act like that. So you're saying keep him? Yes, sir. At least, until we get to the next dock, sir. We owe him that much. No! <laughs> All right. You said your name was Marty? Yes. Okay, Marty. Rose vouched for you. And she doesn't vouch for a lot of people, so... I'm going to let you stay. I swear to you, though. If you hurt anyone on my ship... <laughs> more text. Right? Just a monster. Help me to airlock. Won't bother anyone again. No. You listen to me. Whatever the fuck's happening to you right now, you need to snap out of it. You saved a couple people very dear to me, and for that, I owe you my life. You do. 
You ever had a friend before, Marty? No. Well, don't go killing anyone on my ship. And you do now. That's... <laughs> an interesting proposition. But that Mortec will kill me first chance he gets. No, he won't. I'll make sure of it. Thanks for saving us, Marty. Welcome aboard. This here's Rose. The lady who just ran off crying was Louise. The guy with the stash and the towel was Banker Jim. And you already met Alex. Louise... wanted me to die. Uh, yeah, she's got some baggage. She'll come around. You think so? That motherfucker! I'll electrify his urinal. Alex, where's my car battery and that half a stick of dynamite? Um, yes, eventually. Excuse me a moment. Louise, calm down. I am calm, Captain. So very calm. Is she going to be okay? Depends on your definition of okay. Is she going to kill the captain? Probably not. Will she maybe kill you? Eh. I just watch your back. She can't help it. It's a tick. Good to know. And, uh... Thanks for saving me back there. You're welcome. Rose! Come help me here! Yeah, I gotta go. Good luck. You're dead. You're dead. The moment I can make it look like an accident. You know that, right? So, you didn't obey a direct order? After making that human think you have to? Wonder how the captain will feel about that. Or about how there's no line in Mortec code about obeying commands by superior officers. Because you don't have superior officers. Right out the airlock. <coughs> nice to meet you, too. All right. So that was a fun one. That was gross, Jeff. I know. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, lots of fun. We have more episodes already. I think uh, Sarah's written episodes three and four, uh, but they're entirely too long. Even that one was too long. Um, but uh, three, but we didn't have time to edit that one. So three is uh, probably going to be split into two episodes. Four, probably three episodes. We have a lot of content coming up. So thank you so much for uh, for writing that, Sarah. And I'm looking forward to more of this. So. Let's go to the cinema. Oh. <laughs> All right. Okay. Krampus. Krampus. And by the way, Kringle Down 3 is called Krampus. That's why we're talking that's, about Krampus. That's one of the main reasons we're yeah. reviewing this movie. This came out in 2015? Yes. And uh, yes. who's who, who's who are the I, I don't remember any of the actors. Tony Collette. Right Tony Collette. Right, right, um, right. I love her. Yeah, I, I've loved her ever Sixth since I saw her in the, the Sixth Sense. Yeah. yeah, she's such a good actor. And the other people um, was the guy who played her husband. Was that Adam Scott? Adam yeah. Scott. Yeah. OK. Yeah. And, I recognize um, his face, but I don't and know then that guy. You, I can't say his last name for some reason, but the, the bald guy from uh Oh, this the uh, brother-in-law. Oh, right, yes. right, right, right. Yeah, I can never remember yes. his name, but he—I know his face. He plays the exact same dude in every single movie. Yeah, yeah, he's that guy. Does he's he? that guy. Yeah, one hundred percent. I like. But the he's aunt. always. I mean, he's always fun. He's always fun to watch. Yeah, he was interesting. <laughs> so, I would like to know. Well, I don't know how you want to do this. Do you want to start off talking about what you thought about it? But I'm really no, curious. No, you, 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 you go for it. Why don't you? Yeah. Oh, and do we have a director name? Like, 
Director oh writer. gosh. Oh, we will. Hang on. Let me I was looking it up. Okay. I was I'll watching look some it up. We'll, we'll talk some about stuff. Yeah, I don't. I don't remember his name, but so I the very first time I ever saw this was I went to go see it on the big screen. I think it was either earlier this year or last year. Um, Cinemark was had brought it back. It was like one of those um, every month they do a mystery movie and they just tell you how long it is and they tell you the genre and you pay five bucks and you don't know what what it's going to be. But they leave hints on their Facebook page. So by the time I went, people had accurately guessed what it was based on the clues. So I knew that's what it was going to be. And so I was like, okay, this is cool because I've never seen it. And I watched it and I came away with, uh, like my interpretation of the ending was the same as what I think almost everybody else thought. Okay. Which is, wait a minute. So already we're just going to go into spoiler territory. Yes. Spoilers for sure. Oh my God! Oh my God! Justin Roiland was in this. Yeah, apparently he was clumpy. He, he was clumpy. Was lumpy. He was just a voice. <laughs> this, yeah, there was this. That was unexpected. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, here's Adam, David Kochner. That's his name. That's the. Guy. Yeah. Okay. Well. Spoilers! Spoilers! I, spoilers! Man, 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 man. Spoilers! <laughs> All right, go ahead. So, to me, some of the best parts were just the the dysfunctional family. <laughs> mm -hmm. Even the first half. Right? The first half, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I've been having a first half kick now where, like, I realized I only like the first half of a lot of stuff. So I'm just kind of leaning into that and, like, just watching the first half of things. And, like, well, because stopping. it was, it, it was, it just encapsulated so many um, dysfunctional families yeah, that are forced was... to get together during the holidays, sort of, mm -hmm. you know, and how you just kind of put up with each other, but you just cannot you can't stand each other for the most part. I mean, I didn't really have that experience a ton in my own family, but I certainly can identify a little bit. <laughs> yeah. But um, when I saw it, I thought that, that it had a bad ending for the family. What did you oh, think? You, mm -hmm. What do you mean a bad end? Like, like they're like trapped didn't in the like snow the globe. Ending, or... No, that they're trapped. That... In hell, in a... the snow globe, forever. Yes, yes that not was clear. dead or not free. Either dead yeah, and were... living this afterlife, or just trapped, not free. That's yeah, what I, I think, thought. I think it was clear. I think it was clear they were trapped. Yeah, it seems and clear, doesn't it? Be, oh yeah, yeah, no, it's totally this clear. Christmas yeah. for the rest uh, see? of their lives. See, that's what I thought, and that's the... what almost everybody thinks. However, what would you think if I told you it was actually a happy ending for the family? You would say, no way. No, no way. How, okay. In, in what way? But it was because here's where it gets interesting. This is stuff I found out after I started rewatching it and I was shocked. So it is a happy ending for the family. And it's because of a graphic novel that was written by the director and some other people that tells little sort of trick or treat type, you know, anthology sort of stories mm -hmm. in this graphic novel. And basically, they didn't get trapped. They're not dead. He's just observing them to make sure they behave themselves. Oh. Oh. Right? I would have never. Not as I good. never. You're, I don't think. So the director himself will not tell you what the actual ending is supposed to be, but his oh. work in the graphic novel tells you what the actual ending is. They got a second chance. The reason they're looking all funky at each other, like, what? Is because, like, they have this memory of this bad thing happening, but it's kind of like a deja vu, I guess, where you just, like, know something has yeah, gone yeah, on, yeah, but you yeah. can't put your finger on it. Yeah, yeah. so so that's that's the happy ending, right? They that's really, the... yeah, that's, that's the happy ending. Now, if you refuse to believe what you know about the graphic novel, you would say, no, it's definitely a bad ending. They're trapped in the underground, but that... That is apparently not the, the case, according to the graphic novel, which was worked on by the director himself. Okay. Well, I am going to just ignore that. And, <laughs> okay. Jeff and, wants to, and Jeff wants want to, to believe, refuse. I just want to believe <laughs> that uh, they are trapped in this yeah, hell same. of a holiday forever. See, I, I don't. Yeah. I think I, I think I, that's way more fun. That was that's the only convincing ending. Oh After no, I like happy through. endings. This is the thing about horror. Oh, so I, I love horror, but the problem is with horror almost what the majority of the time, it's a bad ending for the protagonist. Yeah. 
Yeah. The baddie almost always wins. I don't yeah. like that. I, I, I sometimes like it that. feels appropriate, but many times it's like I want them to be able to defeat defeat this thing to win in the end. And he won because so the reason why Krampus did take uh, his grandmother's family in the town is because his grandmother never fought back or stood up to him. This kid in the end, he did. He stood up to him. He took his wish back. He threw the thing back at him. And so therefore he and his whole family gets the second chance. Um, yeah. I, I mean, yeah, I know I just... the exact moment the movie lost me. Oh, okay. Yeah. It had me. And it's funny. Cause when I talked to Jeff that day, I was like, Oh, I like it. It's, it's good. I'm halfway. And oh, like, <laughs> you were just halfway. <laughs> uh, it was just, it was just, it was building up nicely and coming together. And then all of a sudden those puppets, it was the puppets. Yep, they took me the right cookie. out. The, the big, huge, right the, out. the gingerbread cookie no, and well, the big, huge well, puppet. Initially, I think it was the, 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 the thing in this the part, attic. This thing? The, no, no, the no, not Gacka this. Box? Yeah, this I guess it's, it's technically that thing, right? Yeah, but this one, there. this thing I didn't even, you know, I hadn't. There was like a it, thing with it, it angel wings and a, and a mask, and they were like, rah, 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 rah. they were just yeah, like, yeah. it was so like, <laughs> uh, what's happening? And then, and then the, the, the it's, it just kind of, I feel like at that moment, it just fell apart for me. Yeah, like, the cookie. I, I, the I cookie couldn't take it that came down the chimney. When the I mean, kid ate the cookie. Oh, when the kid, what? actually, that's a good point. No, no, I no, was no like, not, yeah, not even then. It was as soon as the cookie came down the chimney. Is when I was oh like, before Fuck the this. kid even yeah before the kid even got the cookie um yeah I was buy I was yeah. definitely buying it more up to that up to that point I I like the fact that he was kind of like jumping house to house it it kind of felt yeah. a little superhero-y in a good way like yeah. I was like oh they're gonna explore his like strengths and weaknesses and or like you know it's gonna be like a fight to the finish and German mom knows like secrets and how to fight him or uh, something yeah but it but it was none of that. It, and uh, it was and more about the battle puppets. with the creatures yeah with these the was, elves yeah. then here come the elves <laughs> yeah and, the, and they were just all just and the elves like, yeah, and everybody was like yeah but it was like that kind of thing where like i don't know it just they just looked too much like puppets for me <laughs> like, it yeah it was it was too was like, like i wanted um, just i i just wanted krampus i wanted i yeah. wanted yeah, a slasher film krampus. with krampus yeah and I didn't want all the stupid toys. Yeah, that's that's what took me. Yeah, on, if it was just Krampus, I feel like yeah, I would have been. I yeah, been I crazy. wasn't crazy about the the toys either. Um, I thought that the character design for Krampus was awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I was expecting like a goat face, but it was like, it was like a fucking <gasps> the ring, you know? Yeah. The just it was like the, the ring face, yeah. Santa. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so right. that was really nice. I I thought that was incredibly creepy. Um, I I just wanted more Krampus, and we got puppets and see not not even puppets. It was it wasn't even cool enough to be puppets. It was CG. It was those weren't those things weren't puppets. Well, the yeah. the, the, the I the think cookies. some of the them were, were practical were CG. For sure. They had to be right. Some like the, of, the, yeah, the, some the of gingerbread the gingerbread man. Gingy reminded me of Gingy mm. from from Shrek. Yeah, some, immediately. Some of the, uh, some of the, some of the, like the the doll, like you said, with the angel wings and stuff that yeah. was like on the guy. But, but it I, was one of those cheap tricks where yeah. you hold on to the puppet. Yeah, exactly. You hold on to the doll and then you're like running. It felt like this. they were just rolling around with it. The shots, the way they came in, it didn't. It wasn't convincing to me. Yeah. But um, but the family drama was so good. It oh was yeah, I really so yeah. into it. I was in, you know, the family <laughs> coming over and and the differences and oh and my like god, the, the young kid and, and, oh, and I Santa know. and his letter, and I was so into it. And then yeah. and then it just kind of and the, the snowstorm and the and the and the snowmen, yes. the multiplying snowmen. That like, I, was, I was having fun trying to figure out who was who because the first one was. Oh, there was one there initially, right? Okay, so here's yeah. a tidbit maybe you guys didn't catch. There was one there initially, and then there was two after the UPS driver, right? So who's the first one? And then third, after the daughter died, I think the first one was the boyfriend. He came to her to see how she was doing and ended up dying on the way. Yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was my, because who else would have been outside of their house as a snowman 
but him. Because everybody, yeah. when they got killed, they got turned into snowmen. Or whatever. So Simon Smith asks, so is the criticism that it didn't live up to your expectations, <clears throat> like you wanted a slasher but got gremlins? Sort of. Oh, yeah, it was um, Gremlins, but, for but real. I, but it, I didn't have expectations until the movie set those expectations. Uh, with right? the beginning. It set, yeah, the up, way... it set up a slasher mm -hmm. with, with her going out into the, yeah, this, into this the kid... snow, with the darkness, with him, you know, going house to house. Um, it's called Krampus, you know, like the, the... I was really looking forward to this character design. Um, and the fact that it turned into Gremlins... I wouldn't have had such a problem with if it was good execution. Right. It's always right? about execution. It's I a, love Gremlins. You can tell the dumbest yeah, story. Yeah, I like Gremlins. It doesn't too. matter. I love Gremlins. Yeah. Love yeah. it. And I, I, I even like the second one too. And that one I love both of them. And there's not a shred of CG in the first one. Uh, probably not in the second one either. The second one's mm -hmm. probably got some some stop motion, right? Um, uh, that's but... a good question. I wonder. Oh, Gremlin Two. Is it and... because it felt it kind of felt cartoony, a little bit slapsticky? It felt to you? cartoony, mm -hmm. and it like I don't know. See, like CG takes me out of the experience m much faster and easier than puppets do. Mm. Because at least puppets like are sharing, you know, the environment. At least puppets are physically there. And you know, they're and the actors are really interacting with them yeah, instead yeah. of something just like a sock in front of yeah. their face or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but they were but they were, you know, in these movies they were going in. Like it was like this is puppets. This is gonna be scary puppets. We're gonna do it. I think yeah. it was uh it was Jim Henson, right? Yeah, yep. I'm sure it's I'm I'm sure it was Jim Henson. Yeah, it was it like all of uh, his Gremlins? Tricks. Uh I don't know. I don't remember if it was. It must have been. Some, I don't some remember relation. if it was know. that's a good question Jim Henson um but I Howie Mandel was gizmo <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh I I, I, I think I knew that and I Tony totally forgot Randall about that was brain gremlin like what I need to rewatch gremlins it's been forever since I saw it it came to the big screen oh, it's the it's at the some point one. yep I have not one. it's been a long time um getting back to Krampus like the drama at the dinner table mm -hmm. I was really so I one of the things part. I, I love that scene the letter but it when was, he read the letter it was frustrating <laughs> because his family wasn't sticking up for him yes but that, and I they think were that just was like the... sitting by and letting these little shits yeah, act like such yeah. little turds you yeah, know doing yeah. him and it's just like oh no 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 don't do anything his sister pulling him down you know all the time like don't do that anything don't do anything that was but one of the things i really love about about um uh the actor who played his mother is her facial expressions she is she is so expressive the old german lady no no the the mother um tony collette oh tony oh, collette's I amazing see. I see, yeah. just tony the collette's way amazing. she's like her eyes her, the way she rolls her eyes. Yeah, United States <laughs> yeah. of United States of Tara. That's that's where she I got first introduced just, to her. She is just. I love her so much, and and the, her, she wore on her face the frustration that it it, it just like represents the frustration I that like the, everybody feels when they have to deal with people like that. Was One it, of my it favorite. Was, it was the, the the husband's mother, right? The husband's Wait. mother was the German lady. Yeah. Oh no 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 yeah that that was but but no the other lady the one that the aunt you're talking the that aunt. was the aunt yeah that no, was it, aunt. it was their it's, mother's it's sister their, it's those two the the two ladies we're seeing now they're sisters. they're sisters it's their aunt yes their right. mother's gone and it's their oh, aunt oh the mother and I died actually, right 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 I right. I, I thought the that. aunt was hilarious <laughs> she was the best character yeah. <laughs> she was the We've best seen character. her before I feel oh, like yeah. she's played like uh, yeah I don't that know where character. oh yeah. I couldn't uh, figure it out but either. Actually, one of my favorite scenes was Tony Collette and that character in the kitchen when she says, yes, how about next year off? we go to your trailer and I yeah. will sit around and bitch about all the things that you worked <laughs> yeah, so hard yeah. to put together for the past couple yeah, of days. Yeah, that was the line. And, 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 and instead of just being a two-dimensional like cartoon character, the aunt was like, oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you know, like, yeah. like it, it was, it was a really nice moment. All the actors were great, and then, by the way, yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and rate this higher than uh, Violent, Violent Night. Violent Night, I said yeah. the same thing. We, we both, my wife and I, said the same thing. Uh, Interesting. I, I still yeah, do I like could, it better. I think I it's better. overall agree. better execution. Yeah. I think, I think that if, I honestly think if they had simply omitted all the CG, uh, silly puppet things. 
um, this movie would have been really, really good. Oh, no, Inst- she died. She died in oh, 2020. No. That's Who? Nice. The aunt? The, the, yeah, the, the aunt. aunt, yeah. Oh, well, dang. I guess she was yeah, I, I like it that, that the the characters, hands. the family that comes in, the, the family that's just so hard to get along with and everything, the sister, her, her kids, her husband, and the aunt, they come in and they seem like very like black and white type cardboard, you know, cut out sort of idiotic characters, kind of like what we got with the, the family in uh, Violent Night. Mm-hmm. But then you do start to see a bit more nuance and shades of gray to them as people. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I really did appreciate that a lot as yeah. as the story yeah, unfolded. Yeah, the, the, Not so much the, the family kids. in, but the family kids in, didn't change too much. Yeah, the family in Violent Night was so over the top. Yes, that that, that it was unrelatable. <laughs> they were just yeah. like they they were all weird and and like yeah. But I, I I guess I understand like why else would there be a heist in a house, right? Like you had to. If you're putting a heist or you're putting a heist of drama into a house with a kidnapping, then there's got to be big money, right? So it couldn't right. be like there's got to be a good reason. It's so, not just a regular home invasion. So they, I think they 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 added that to it, but then the characters are so. Oh, yeah, this was said they were so unlikable. Hospital. It was ridiculous. Yeah. There was nothing redeeming about their family, yeah. and I guess that was the intention. But it just made me. I don't know. Yeah. No, I agree that this one is better than Violent Night. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh and yeah, I guess I guess honestly, I even thought that them being trapped in the snow globe like forever in ha- hell was a happy ending. Like I <laughs> like I didn't they would just relive Christmas morning they were back Christmas in, on Day. Earth. Yes, I, I, I I saw that as like a mercy, right? They were all back together again <laughs> because their real life. When together the daughter was... died, like my heart sunk. Like I was like, "Oh, they're they're, they're gonna kill him." <laughs> like, <laughs> they got me. I was like, "Oh no, they're all gonna die now." <laughs> like they got me with that first killing, but it never kind of unfolded that way, you know. Yeah. And the 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 kid, the 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 the, 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 the chubby kid, that was just so funny. They were so, all so chubby. funny. All, all the kids were chubby. I know, the kids yeah. of the in laws were chubby. For the cookie that went for the cookie. Oh, the yeah, hookie. that one. Oh, my gosh, that kid. Oh, his face. I like, but I liked, I did like one aspect of that was the rattle, right? It came down and the cookie was sitting there and then he kind of, he jerked, you know, like like a fisherman kind of like yeah. rattled the chain. Yeah. Yeah. And then the kid was like, oh. Yeah. Oh, what's this? This isn't weird. A little piggy. <laughs> all right. So. Yeah. It was, it, it was like uh, it was like uh, char- chocolate fat, Charlie and the chocolate fat. Yeah, oh. reminded me of that, like when the kid, uh, you know, he eats the blueberries and, and he. Uh... I've never seen that movie. Oh, that movie's got some spine chilling <laughs> moments. I we we tried to sit, even the old one, we sat with our, we tried to sit with our son and watch it, like oh, we're gonna it just watch looks Willy too... Wonka, and then like the kids start getting like processed in the in the story oh, okay like, yeah i never it's actually very dark you, is it really wanna, oh yeah okay. yeah it's bordering on horror movie for yeah. real. i agree well, simon yeah, they probably are horrified yeah. krampus hereditary and this between krampus hereditary and the sixth sense tony collette's uh kids must be terrified <laughs> oh and then keegan <laughs> hall asks i still haven't seen either gremlins movies should i just wait for next no. halloween and sin uh, rightly points out Gremlins is a Christmas, Christmas movie. movie. Yes. yes. And I would Correct. argue that it's a better Christmas movie than both of the movies that we've Correct. Read. Oh, I um, thought you were getting ready to say it's a better Christmas movie than Die Hard. And it's I was a gonna have great to, Christmas movie. I was going to have movie. to disagree with you. But, yes, I, I, love I don't know. I, 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 I would rather watch Gremlins than Die Hard. But than Die Hard? At, at the, yeah, so, but so, I don't know that it's a better movie. And ca- no, no spoilers in case you didn't know. Um, the Gremlin starts off as a Christmas gift. Like that's, that's right. That's right. That's yeah, the yeah. first one, uh, the Mogwai. That's mm-hmm. uh, yep. that's um, uh, Gizmo. They Gizmo, named him. Yep. So he's it, that starts off the whole sets off the whole uh, the whole ridiculous like chain of events that happened in that movie. So, so do you guys film. remember what you rated Violent Night yeah, out of ten? Like four. I gave you gave it. it a four. I thought I thought I, I gave it five. like a three or three and a half out of five. Out of, okay, which is so like a six, six out of seven. ten, maybe six point five. I was underwhelmed with it. Um, for me, I th- I can't remember what I said. I thought I said five or five point five. I could have given it a six. Um, I'll give Krampus six and a half. Six and a half. I'll give Krampus yeah. six and a half. I'll give it a six. And yeah. I would go so far as to say, 
I would recommend it to the right person. Right? Someone who just really loves horror films. Yeah. I yeah, would say yeah. to them, hey, there's some cool moments. This in is here. it's it's a flavor. It's 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 yeah. a flavor of horror. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Whereas I would not recommend Violent Night to anybody, really. Huh. Interesting. I mean, I, I didn't dislike it as much as you guys did. I just was uh, disappointed that I didn't enjoy it as much as I thought I would. I mean, I didn't I didn't really dislike it either, but... It, like, meh, right? That's how yeah, I felt about it, Black Adam. Right. Meh. Ah, I was about to mention Black Adam. Oh, man, I, finally, I, I, finally I tried to watch it. that, too. I could not. N I, I have to say it was, it was not awful, right? But it wasn't great. No, if you, I watched it in the, if if you watch it as if it's one of those DC cartoons, it works fine. <laughs> it literally plays like one of their cartoons. Literally. Okay. Be I can see I, Their that, cartoons sort of. are better. And then yeah. I was like, as I watched it, oh, I was man. like, okay, I'm going to pretend the cartoons are better. Yeah, the cr their probably. cartoons are better. The, yeah, the no, best he part wasn't about compelling. Black Adam. I'm not a hero, no, yeah, he damn was, it. Yeah. I'm it. not a hero. <laughs> Stop calling. <laughs> that was the whole movie. That was the whole movie. The, the best part was when he was first uh, awoken. That yeah. was the best part of the. Oh, whole you movie. mean when he fights the army and he like at the, the very beginning to save the cat, to save the cat, or or, or the no, one... at the very beginning when he was first woken up. In oh, the you mean cave, in his and then he time. goes out and he kicks ass everywhere. In his time, you mean. no, no, in modern day time. Oh, when they right, woke right. Him up. He fights the army. Yeah, that's the save the save the cat. That's like that's like the the first moment you're like, oh, wonder up. Like, oh, like if you're if you're a nerd, you're judging actual cat. <laughs> oh no, that's that's a book Referring about to film the cat, writing. The, the, right, the the book and, about and the writing, save yeah. the cat is like the idea is that you have to show the hero doing his thing in the beginning of the movie, right? Like, right, yeah. And for Superman, it was like flying down and saving the cat, and then it became a the. Oh, okay. wrote a book that's where that. that originated from. And okay, so, yeah, I didn't I know read, that. Yeah, it's a, it's a really good book. It's like for mm. for screenwriters, it teaches you how to write like short um teaches you how to write like short plots and one like one sentence like lines that describe the entire th movie and creating clear and con concise mm. ideas. But so save the save the cat is you, you know if you're a nerd or whatever you know like you're a superhero guy you're like I wonder how powerful he is you know what kind of magic is going to be <laughs> like what's going to happen and that's the moment where you're like oh super speed cool bro oh lightning oh look at that look at how he killed that guy man he just like yeah. oh, he you just sound like made like a... everybody fly into the air and then and then they all just blew up at once man is, is he faster than Flash bro oh, oh my man. gosh Ahmed you sound like one of those gangster Dudes in blood in blood out. <laughs> you need to do voice work for us. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, Krampus slightly better than uh, Violent Night. Uh, yeah, I think I think it's a decent Christmas movie. Hopefully next year uh, there's a new one that's out. A new what? A new Christmas, Christmas movie. movie. Of course, there's always going to be a new oh, Christmas okay. movie. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, and of course, Kringle Down 3. You know, we have... We, yeah, you know, I would I recommend Kringle Down. I would recommend Kringle Down over both of these films easily. Oh, do we have time yeah. for a short sample? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I think I, we do. I think we I, do. I, I so, need to listen to, to the third one. I haven't listened to it yet. Okay. Yeah, so yeah the, I'm a, the, I'll be done with it, like, tonight or, you know. But yeah, here, yeah. Here's, here's, here's a sample, a little sample. December 15th, 1995, Mexico City, Mexico. Jose Salazar lay in bed, looking at the ceiling, wondering if Mama and Papa would find the bird. It had taken so long to die. He was surprised. Even with most of its feathers plucked, the thing just squawked and squealed until he finally used the scissors. He'd seen his father do far worse to men, even a woman. Papa didn't know Jose had watched, but the drug lord was careless. He wasn't much of a drug lord. He'd taken over for Ernesto Cabeza just last year and had spent most of his time since killing off his rivals. He'd tried to send a message, dispatch them as cruelly as he could manage. Jose had watched from the shadows. He knew he should have been upset at the things he saw, but he wasn't. He was mostly curious and sometimes bored. Some of Papa's victims passed out right away and never woke up again. Papa took them apart anyway, 
Some lasted a long time, no matter how much they were beaten, burned, shocked, or cut. Jose tried some of what he'd seen on insects, then animals. He'd been particularly hard on his birthday cat. Mama had caught him and taken it away before it was dead. He didn't like that. She'd made one of Papa's men put it out of its misery. Then she locked Jose in the basement for the night while she figured out his punishment. She must have forgotten because she was passed out in a bed full of cocaine and bottles when one of the Sicarios let him out the next morning. But now Jose was worried. Christmas was just a few weeks away and he wanted a present. He'd begged for it, promised he'd be good, would clean up after himself. He just wanted one thing. A puppy. He was sure he'd get it, too. Mama never said no. Not for long. If she did, he'd scream and hurt himself or something, and she'd give in. Child's play. One of the Sicarios looked in his room. Guard duty. Papa made him keep the door open. The man peered in for a moment, saw nothing out of the ordinary, then walked away. Jose sighed. He never slept well, and it was so long till morning. After an hour, he dozed off. He woke to a scratching sound. Something was scratching at his window. Jose assumed it was a dream. He was on the third floor of the hacienda. Nothing could be scratching at his window this high up. He closed his eyes and dismissed it. Then he heard the window open. He sat upright but saw nothing, just felt a cool breeze come through the window. But there was a smell, faint at first, then stronger, very strong, foul like rotten eggs and something else. Jose didn't feel much, especially fear. Mostly he felt anger. Now he felt fear though. He laid back down quickly and pulled the covers over his head. Something took two heavy steps near his bed, on the side near the window. He heard something rustle, and the distant sound of... crying? Jose peered out from the covers. At first he couldn't see anything, just darkness in a dark room. But then, slowly, he realized the darkness in front of him was a shape blocking the window. A large shape, a person, a figure. Jose gasped, then started to scream for the Sicarios, but a massive, stinking paw covered his mouth. A face leaned out of the darkness, slowly revealing yellow, slitted goat eyes with a maw full of dirty, snaggly teeth. The figure picked Jose up by his head, sniffed him, then stuffed him in a burlap sack, somehow full of crying children. Mexico City, an hour later. Hector could still hear Carmelita screaming from inside the house. He was outside, just under Jose's window, surrounded by his very nervous Sicarios. He was there an hour ago, boss. I checked, I swear. The hitman had been around Hector long enough to know the boss didn't tolerate failure or excuses. It was cold out. Hector was wearing boxers, a robe, and sandals. He had a 45 in one hand and a flashlight in the other. You say the bedroom window was open? Yes, boss. Hector scanned the ground under the window. There were no marks where a ladder had been placed, no footprints that he could discern. Nothing. Jose wouldn't have climbed out the window on his own, and he certainly wouldn't have jumped from the third floor. The little shit didn't like pain. He seemed perfectly willing to inflict it, but couldn't take it. Hector walked back in the house. Carmelita was staggering around, useless, with a long streak of yayo under her nose. The maid had a glass of bourbon on the rocks ready for him as he passed by. Yeah, yeah. He took it, started to say thanks, then remembered he was the boss. The tough guy. Kindness would get him killed. Weakness would get him killed. And above all, Hector Salazar was a survivor. He downed the bourbon, set it on the marble counter, then headed back upstairs, his nervous Sicarios following close behind. Jose's room was neat, orderly. The kid was meticulous. He'd give him that much. Every toy was lined up on the shelf where it was supposed to be, neat and tidy, mostly unplayed with. 
only the bedspread was out of order, lying down and to the right as he faced the bed, toward the window as if it had been pulled that way by something. The drug lord knelt down and looked at the bedspread without touching it. He saw a hair, a long, gray, coarse hair. Find something, boss? asked the hitman, Paolo. Hector caught a whiff of something, something fetid and foul, like rotten eggs and goat, or something like goat. He'd smelled something similar before, in Cancun. See, come here, Hermes. Let me tell you what really happened to our boss, Ernesto Cabeza. Then, I want you to get me the Canadian. All right. So that was the first I've actually heard of Ryan's take on Krampus, and I'm so excited to hear more. Um, that was a very nice touch, what he did. So really looking forward to... We're going to listen to this tomorrow, the whole thing, um, and make sure it's all polished up, and then we'll be ready to publish it on Friday, 10 a.m. So watch out for that. Uh, so out of the three Kringle Downs, I would rate... The first one the best, then Kringle Down 3 is next, and then Kringle Down 2. Really? Yeah, yeah. I liked 3 better than 2, but not by a lot. Not by a lot. They're, I mean, I, I think that there's a nice quality standard for the series, but mm. still, the first one. Guys, if you haven't listened to the first one yet, I mean, you could it's wait. Good. You could wait till Friday for it to go 25% off, but, you know, you're not, you're like, what is that? You'd, you'd save 75 cents. I don't know. Uh, you can get the whole series. <laughs> you can get the whole, whole series, and then you're actually saving. But Kringle Down, um, our Christmas tradition for cinematic audio. So uh, please go check those out. Uh, I'm sure you'll enjoy yourselves. Uh, I know I definitely had a blast uh, doing the voices for all of those. So thank you for playing that sample. Looking forward to listening to more tomorrow. And yeah, that's our uh, that's our cinema, that's our uh, cinema portion. Have we decided what we're? Uh, did you guys take a look at my suggestions for the next one, which is going to revolve around seance, the release of one of our seance episodes? Oh no, no, no! I I put it up in the um, the YouTube the YouTube chat on Teams. Uh, there were three. I went uh -huh. searching for three that had to do with seances or people that could communicate with dead. Uh -huh. I found two of the three I have not seen, and I'm down for watching either one of those. Unless you guys know of any something else, if you guys, you know, I, want I to suggest something else. I guess after I saw the suggestions, I started thinking on it, and okay, you know, save for like Beetlejuice. Like I'm not, I, I'm not sure. <laughs> or maybe Poltergeist. Poltergeist had some seancey stuff in it. Wait, wait, okay. Did, so what, yeah, what were your suggestions? Bit. My suggestions were Family Plot. Which is an Alfred an Alfred Hitchcock film. It was his last film. Okay. It does have a, from what I understand, a seance scene. I think it was out. It came out in the seventies. I have not seen it, but I've heard of it. Then the other one was the Orphanage, which is a, I believe it's a Spanish language um, movie, but it has a seance in it. At, from what I was reading, and then the other one was called The Gift. Which is uh, got Kate. It has Kate Blanchett in it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't mm. think there's any seances, but she does do like card readings for her clients, and she can see dead people and communicate with them. Oh, is that I a Sam that Raimi was... film? You know, I'm not I sure. It's got Keanu it Reeves out. in it, it's and Hilary out. Swank, and you know, I Katie Holmes. Was... Isn't there a book, another like self help book called The Gift or something? Yes, probably. I oh, I don't two know. It's because... so twisted in my head that this like, movie I never came out. This movie, in... out. <laughs> this movie came out in 2000, and she plays, I, it takes place in the, yes, it was directed by Sam Raimi. Yes, it was. Oh, no, right. Okay, okay. And it go. was Here's... written by Billy Bob Thornton. I, I didn't haven't realize seen it. that. I haven't oh, you seen haven't? It. I want to okay. see it. Um, I'm, I'm torn between that one and Hitchcock. I'm down for either one. Okay, I, so I, I, yeah, I'm. This is the other gift, right? This is. <laughs> uh, I saw that. Jason, I saw Bateman. that. But no, this is not the same. This is. This is not the self-help gift. This is just no. another gift. No. No, no, no. Okay, Have you not that's... seen that movie, Ahmed? No. The gift. Uh. -uh. Hang on. Which one of these? There's two thousand. 
Yeah, it's the one with the, with a Kate Blanchett. And there's um, Katie Holmes doing Katie the Holmes. only face she can ever do in. <laughs> Uh, Keanu Was she Reeves. Get killed in that? Oh wait, I better not give anything away. I feel like maybe I did see this or something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So this Kate was Blanchett... right before Spider Man. Yeah, Kate. Oh yeah, yeah. That's yeah, because it came out in two thousand. Um, she Damn plays right. a widow, hmm. and she basically to scrape by for a living. She does tarot readings. Um, she's very poor. She has three kids, and she sees this murder i mean you you know she's i mean you know she based on the trailer you know what's going to happen to her character oh i like okay. all these actors i want to see this one yeah okay I, I always good. enjoyed the film you guys see i feel like i i feel like i'm kind of almost striking out a bit with some of these movie suggestions i've made no 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 what? not <laughs> not with a sam raimi movie I'm gonna uh, love okay. yeah <laughs> agreed i love i love sam what raimi about... so much i like Drag the, me to the... hell Oh, dude, that's his best one. But like, I oh, love okay. Sam Raimi so much that I actually liked the new Doctor Strange film. That's how much. I like <laughs> Sam Raimi. Okay. <laughs> okay. Into it. I mean, I didn't hate it, but it wasn't his best work. But no, um... no, it was not. But I don't care. It was Sam Raimi. It had Sam Raimi all over it, and I just it had it. Sam Raimi well, all over it. Yes, all the camera this. work, all the camera work, yeah. the close up, the eye stuff. Oh, it was dude. All Sam but here's Raimi. here's the thing. Here's the thing. Is I went in knowing that the script was going to be shit and expecting that. And so it didn't bother me that the script was shit. It was executed so well, like as far as the directing is concerned, that I just didn't care. I just had so much fun oh, okay. watching it. Just So okay. this movie, the lady curses her. Drag Me to Hell is Yeah, amazing. Drag Me to Hell, yeah. Let's oh, my God. Oh, my God. We'll, we'll definitely do that one some one of these days. But I think the gift is more topical. Yeah, and I haven't. Is, seen is it. it really? And I, like the I, I mean, I would. It's, I wonder. Hang on. Say what? Wait. Repeat that. I didn't hear you. Good. What did you say, Ahmed? Oh no, no. I, I think I was mumbling something. Like I, I was, I was saying. Oh, there's a movie called Seance. But yeah, never mind. I saw um, the name of a movie called Seance. It, it looked. Yeah, it looked. I was trying to it's look new. for things it's that. Hey, I know, kind of recent, but I didn't even seriously investigate that because I wanted to recommend something that I knew. Like, I've seen The Gift, and I personally really enjoyed it a lot. I've always loved that movie. Um, the other two, they have solid scores. That doesn't necessarily mean we're going to like them, but they seemed topical, too. So that's what I came up with as a suggestion. Mm. I'm down yeah, with rewatching The probably, Gift. Yeah, that's yeah, probably the best. It. That's probably the let's best. And what day is that? I don't know what day that now the, is it the fifth. Okay, so that sounds we're right. doing just like a, a oh, wait, movie discussion. No, no, we're not once. two weeks. We're doing the second. Oh, second. And I'm fourth. sorry. I keep messing. I'm going to mess it up. Okay. Again. Let's say it's going to be the twelfth. The twelfth would make the most sense. I think. Okay. It's okay. Calendar. Wait, right. is that the is next that... SBTL is January twelfth, guys? I I believe I we will be wa we will be watching the gift. So if anybody else wants to watch the gift. Um, to uh, kind yeah, of make, have like, this conversation club. with us when we come to that Sound Booth Theater Live, please do. Sorry, I'm mistaken. It's actually the 11th. The 11th. The, the, the 11th. Sorry. Is that corresponding one, with a release? One, two, three. With a release of one of the episodes? Oh, Is that yes. That will be, yes. Uh, the seance the right episode week? will be the next day. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yep. So the Score. 11th, January 11th. Okay. Yeah. And and after so now we're going to we will we're going to go to just once a month movie discussions now, right? It's not going to we only did it twice this time because of Yeah, I think so. Maybe. We'll we'll see. We'll I see. mean, I'm down yeah. for however many you want to. I just I, wanted I, I, to No, I honestly I want to maybe time it with things that that are that are releasing. If, if we feel like it, cool. you know, okay. it makes like sense, it. then let's time it rather than Rather than choose one of the times of month, let's go for the one that makes most sense for okay. the releases that month. You know? Yeah. Cool. That's All right. Fine. So we got uh, our next segment. Oh, Aunt we, May's we, in we, it. We will. Aunt May's in it. That's right. <laughs> um, so on to the next segment. <laughs> we I'll are doing David North's <laughs> Guardian. This is a practice movie. Of Aster. Movie. Guardian of Aster Fall. Book one. Battlefield yes. Reclaimed. So I just uh, emailed it to you, Ahmed. Oh, thank you. Um, um, I will be uh, running this one solo. 
So right after we're done here, we're going to close the show. Thank you guys so much for hanging, coming and hanging out with us. I hope you had fun with that episode of Pirates of New Fantasia and with our little cinema uh, segment. And um, yeah, can't wait for the next one. January 11th, we'll be doing uh, The Gift in the cinema segment. And yeah, it that's about calendar. it. Thank right you guys now. one more time. And here goes... One more time. It is David North's Guardian of Aster Fall, Book One, Battlefield Reclaimed. Battlefield Reclaimer. Sorry. Here it goes. All right. So Sam, the MC, is 18, solid, but young, a little naive here, doesn't know much about what's going on, but he's dedicated and wants to improve. His dad is Jarek. Basically the second MC of book one, since it's mostly the two of them. He's solid, about 50, tired, wants desperately to fix things for his family and to unlock their class. But he's lived a hard life and hasn't succeeded yet. He tries to keep a good eye on Sam here, facing adversity with humor. Um, okay, blurb. When Sam and his dad go to explore an old ruin, they get more than they bargained for. They encounter a broken outsider formation left behind from a distant war that teleports them far away from home, and Sam is left transformed. All right, here goes. <clears throat> All right, let's get to it! Jarek finally announced as he pushed himself back to his feet. You try to infuse manor over on that side, and I'll try over on this side. And then we hope that we don't die! <laughs> His dad's laughter had a certain element of madness to it this time. Fortunately, activating spell formations was usually safe. As long as they stayed in control of the formation, it shouldn't harm them. Right? Sam pushed aside a flash of nervousness. What does it matter anyway? If they didn't unlock this class, they'd be laborers for the rest of their lives. He'd... Uh, he'd learned the rudiments of how to use the skill over the last few hours, and now he just needed to push his mana into this formation. It was the most basic thing he could possibly do with it. Even his little sister could have done it, and she couldn't focus on anything for more than three seconds. Start! His dad's voice rang out from the other side of the room, where he was doing the same thing. Sam's face turned to a mask of concentration as he chewed his lip. Mana began to gather at his fingertips and flow into the wall, following the path he commanded. Faint blue lines began to radiate from where his fingers touched. They were really grasping at straws here, but that didn't stop him from hoping it still worked. No matter what happened, as long as it was something that helped them understand their class... It was worth a shot. It was probably going to be a recovery spell for the walls, or some command function for the ruins, or even a communication node. All of those would be crazy risks in their own way. But at this point, it just didn't matter. When you had nothing, even a straw was worth grasping. The formation began to light up as another point of mana flowed out of his hands. The light was stretching for four feet now, and it seemed to be accelerating, moving faster as it built up more mana. Keep going! He heard his dad's shout of encouragement from the other side. Point after point of mana flowed out, and he felt himself become light, becoming lighthearted, but he still didn't stop. When his mana reached one point, the wall in front of him was a giant, shimmering web of blue light. Swirling patterns covered it from one side of the room to the other, just looking at it made him dizzy. Or maybe that was the mana loss. It was getting hard to think straight. Just a little more, Sam! His dad roared out. His voice was thin, and it felt like it was swirling through the room with the blue patterns. Sam gritted his teeth as he forced the, the last point of mana he had into the formation, letting it flow into whatever the spell was doing. As he did, he almost expected nothing to happen. For all of this to just be a huge waste of time and effort. Then a voice spoke, rising out of the formation on the wall. It echoed acro out across the room, rolling like thunder as it swirled with blue and white swatches of color. Sam swayed on his feet, barely recognizing what was happening. Time blurred as he slumped against the wall. From across the room he heard his dad's groan and a thud as he collapsed. Transfer formation activated. 
accessing stored mana reserves. Mana reserves corrupted, attempting to correct. Correction failed. Mana crystals are broken. Spell formation integrity at 7.665%. Accessing astral displacement. Requesting reinforcements. The words faded in and out of Sam's mind as he leaned against the wall. He could barely think. All of his energy was drained. He didn't even have the strength to push himself away from the wall. Request failed. No contact points available. Activating final protocol. Two controllers identified. Protocol dictates that they must be transferred home if possible. Sufficient energy for one transfer. Closest controller identified. Selected. Self-destruction of final mana core required to initiate transfer. Command accepted. Self-destruction commencing. Controller will be transferred to the closest operational outpost. The starry, blue swirls of energy swept out of the wall and engulfed Sam, tearing him away from, the reality, as, from reality as the world around him disintegrated. Stars swept past his vision, and a black void spun around him, a huge, brilliant blue and green sphere filling it. White and silver streaks swept across it in misty waves. And then he felt himself jerked back, like a slingshot, even faster than before. The final thing he heard was not coming, was not comforting. Transfer failed. Returning controller to base. Self-destruction imminent. The void spun past Sam in a blur, the shimmering blue and green of the world looming in his eyes as he hurtled back toward it. He could feel a strange resistance, as if he were pushing through an invisible layer of something. Whatever it was slid along his skin and tingled as it sank in, weaving around his bones. His body crackled under the force of it, changing shape. The energy intensified until it was burning hot, scorching his skin. It felt like his eyes were on fire as the energy boiled out of them again, leaving him behind. Everything turned into a blur, and then he was through. He slammed back down onto the floor of the ruins. The same blue energy that had infused the wall poured outwards, surrounding Sam and his father in a crystalline shell. His last thought, as the world around them imploded, was to hope his dad was okay. The crystal blue bubble shuddered as the world around it dissolved into liquid stone. It sank down through it, deeper and deeper as it headed through the old core of the outpost, and then continued farther. The last flicker of intelligence from the exploding core kept the shield from fading, but it was a weak, transient thing. It had no control over where they went. Even when the explosion faded, the force of it continued to push the bubble farther away. They moved to the side as well as down, traveling an unknown distance. Layers of stone, some of them caverns filled with horned and scaled monsters, flickered past them until the crystal bubble finally came to a rest. It was a small stone cavern with stalactites descending from above, hanging over a pool of swirling silver-white liquid. The liquid was translucent and gave off a soft light that illuminated the area closest to it. There was no obvious exit but there were a few small tunnels in the walls, probably made by burrowing animals, which allowed air to flow through the chamber. Around the edges, there were lichens and mushrooms of different sizes growing along the walls. Some radiated a dim light of their own. Sam and Jarek lay in a tumble of limbs at the center of the cavern, near the silver pool. Some time passed, but no one was paying attention to how long it was. <sighs> Jarek's eyes flickered open as he reached toward his head. His entire body felt like it had been hammered by Surtek, the drunken smith in the village. That bastard. Had he gotten drunk and knocked everyone out again? After that, the village made the unanimous agreement that he would never again be paid in beer, even if that was all they had. His head was pounding, and there was a strange taste of dust and metal in his mouth. The world was a blur of silver white, but it was so faint that he couldn't see very well, even as his eyes tried to adjust. Where is Sam? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Jarek is the dad, isn't he? Thick. Yeah, sorry. Where is Sam? 
Sam woke up to the feeling of someone yanking on his head, pulling it up and down like a ball. There was also the familiar presence of his dad next to him. He could smell him, the scent of his old, sweaty shirt, along with the smell of dust and stone. Past that, there was something else, a bright liquid that smelled like energy. Ah, uh, Dad? He groaned out as he reached up to stop him. Why are you pulling on my head? His eyes flicked open, and then he instantly closed them as he was overwhelmed with light and energy. It felt like a sun had just exploded in his head. He didn't know where they were, but it seemed they were both all right. Thank the law for that. No, never mind that. Screw the world law. The stupid thing was... The stupid thing was what put them into this mess in the first place. If the world law had been working, they'd never had gone exploring an outsider ruin. They never would have had to deal with that explosion and whatever the voice had been. Where the hell are we now? He'd passed out when he'd landed back in the room, but he understood that the voice had stuck some sort of blue shield around them, which was how they'd survived its self-destruction. What happened after that? It smelled like they were still underground. There was stone and... lichen? There was also a feeling of weight pressing down all around him, as if he could feel the rock. The room was as brilliant as the, as the sun, the source somewhere off to the side. Silver-white light streaked his vision, leaving him almost blind as his eyes tried to adjust. That strange, burning heat that had poured into his body during the failed transfer was still there, or some vestige of it. Every part of him was radiating heat. He could feel it reflecting back at him from the stone he was lying on. It wasn't hurting him now, but it still felt weird. Sam! There's something on your head. What is it? His dad interrupted his thoughts again, sounding concerned. Was that why he'd been yanking on his head when he woke up? Sam reached up to his head, feeling around for whatever it was, and his hand bumped against something hard and hot at the side of his forehead, near his hair. His fingers traced along the curve of it. It was thicker near his skull, and then it rose upwards, coming to a sharp point a few inches away. He tugged on it, but it didn't come off. There was another one of the same type on the opposite side. What they were was obvious. Um... Don't worry, Dad, he replied. He really had no idea how to explain that one. It's... fine. I can hear the hesitation in your voice, his dad replied as he let out a relieved breath. <sighs> what is it? Tell me and we'll deal with it together. It's too dark in here for me to see much still, and I haven't found the torch yet. It's... uh... Sam hesitated again, before he finally just spat it out as simply as possible since he had no better way of explaining it. It's horns. I have no idea why they're there. Horns? His dad's shocked voice sounded out in the cavern. Why do you have... Never mind. It's all my fault. We'll figure out a way to fix it before your mother sees them. All right, cool. All right, David North, thank you so much for uh, for requesting that one. The link for that should be in the description below. Uh, it is, I am assuming, on Amazon, um, available on Kindle. Do we have a, I wonder if there's an already an audio book of it, if you guys prefer audio. Of course, some, most of you probably will because, well, you're here, aren't you? But, uh, yeah, that was it. Um, thank you again, Ahmed. Thank you, Sin, for coming and... Uh, helping out with Sound Booth Theater Live, and thank you everybody for coming and hanging and listening to us. Uh, the next Sound Booth Theater Live is on January 11th. Uh, tomorrow is S1R3N by Ben Wolf. Pick that up for free, cinematic audio. And Friday is the 12th day of Christmas for our sale. That will be Kringle Down 1, 2, and 3. Please purchase those and have a happy 